Today, you use the word brides 96 times. I'm a single gay man, and if I wanted to get married, wouldn't be with any of you, because none of you made an effort. And I'm sure it's not intentional. I'm sure you're not homophobic. If you are, let's have a drink later. Um, <laughs> maybe seven or eight drinks. I'll get started ahead of you. Um, I know it's the bridal industry. And James, I'm sorry you created Bride Lux and Bride Magazine. And it's been what it's been for so long. But things are changing. And what was isn't always what will be. So today, I want to walk through with you as soon as this magical screen begins to work. Um, a little bit of information about our community and then how you can do a better job of attracting us, working with us, and for us. So, first of all, a little quiz. What does LGBTQIAP stand for? Now I encourage you to take out your notebooks, your laptops, and on the left side, please write the letters LGBTQIAP and begin to fill them in. They started with just four letters, LGBT. Then we decided Q, little I, little A, little P. And as we go, uh, let's do it together. L. Wow, you don't like lesbians. That was like almost embarrassing for you to say it. Let's say it together. I know we had lunch. I know we're sleepy. I know you maybe got emotional. I apologize. British people don't like to be emotional in public. I'm American. Here I am. Get used to it. L. Thank you. G. Gay. B. Bisexual. T. Trans or transgender. Q. Queer or questioning. I. Intersex. A. Asexual or ally, and P, pansexual. For those of you who need a reminder, here you are, LGBTQIAP. These are the letters that represent the community that is not heterosexual. Anyone who is other is welcome in the world of LGBTQIAP. So these are a lot of letters, a lot of spelling. What do they all mean? Lesbian, same-sex attraction between two women. Gay, same-sex attraction between two men. The reason I say generally is because this is a term that's actually broad. Anyone can be gay, men or women, but as men have done through the history of the world, we selfishly take what we like and leave everyone else behind. So now men use the word gay um, more in a modern sense, and women tend to say lesbian, but that's not accurate. You can be gay and a woman, um, but you can't really be lesbian and a man. So anyways, you can be if you want to. I, have, I exhibit lesbian tendencies as a gay man myself. So, um, bisexual, same sex and opposite sex attraction, i.e. very lucky on Tinder because you just have all the matches in the world that are out there for you. You can do a lot of swiping. Um, transgender, when one's gender identity does not align with their assigned sex at birth. A hospital's job is to give, make sure you're healthy when you arrive into this world and then give you a gender based on what they see. That is their job, that is what they have to do. What they see and how you feel don't always align to be the same. Transgender is not a fad, it's not a cool thing, it's not a, a decision you make briefly or long term. Imagine waking up feeling you are literally in the wrong body every single day of your life. And the body you were given is not who you feel to the core of your person. Whether trans people decide to transition with surgery or fashion or the way they move in their body is none of our business. If you are lucky enough to work with a trans person, you probably will have a lot of questions. But it's, again, up to them to lead the conversation on how much they want to share with you with their process. Uh, queer. Um, queer is basically an umbrella term for anyone who is not straight. So it's a world that we kind of welcome everyone into. Questioning, uh, the process of exploring your own gender identity, expression, and or sexual orientation. So in the Kinsey scale of sexuality, if you're kind of in that middle gray area, you're questioning. Um, intersex, this is the new term for hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite is not a word that we are using anymore. Um, intersex more accurately describes the condition that a person is born into. Again, there's no choice in this matter. You're born with both male and female genitalia or chromosomes or DNA. 
Sometimes it is visible, sometimes it is not visible. Um, because you are born intersex, a medical doctor would say something is wrong with you, they want to fix you. The new trend in the queer community is let a child grow up as they are, and when they're old enough to decide if they need to be fixed, that a decision is on them. Uh, and then asexual. Asexuality is not to be confused with abstinence. Abstinence is a choice to refrain from sexual activity before marriage. Don't know why, some people like to make that choice. Um, asexuality is sort of for those with little to no sex drive. So like having sex is down here and eating at Chipotle is like up here. Um, do you have Chipotle here? No, you don't. You do. Well, what's your equivalent? What's, what does everyone crave that's delicious every day? Nothing. Okay, great. <laughs> you guys are really on it today. All right, so Chipotle or your equivalent, sex. Um, pansexual. Pansexual removes sexuality and sex from the equation, and it's an attraction to the human, to the person, to the soul, not the body or the bits. Right? So you're not attracted to the physicality of a male or a female, but you're connected to their soul. Janelle Monet, popular uh, performer, recently came out as pansexual. Um, sex, sexuality, and gender are all very different. We don't have time to get into that today as it doesn't directly affect um, weddings and wedding planning and wedding business. Um, so we'll move on now to a couple of statistics to help bring it all back home for you. So number one, it's a marriage. It's not a same-sex marriage. It's not a gay marriage. We didn't fight for equality to have something different. We fought for exactly what you've already all had your entire life. So I uh, co-wrote a piece here with this little newspaper. A gay wedding is just a wedding. It's just a wedding. One day when I meet my Prince Charming, you know, he's tall, handsome, brown or blue eyes, I'm open, really sweet. When he gets down or I get down, he's not going to be like, Jove, you're so smart and handsome and funny and hardworking and creative. Will you gay marry me? <laughs> and then we can buy a gay house together and raise gay children and go on gay vacations. I love you so very gay much. <laughs> right? Like, that's not the world that we live in. That's not what we want. We don't want to be different. Right? You don't say, uh, black wedding, Chinese wedding, will you African marry me, right? You just say, will you marry me? The people don't matter. The soul of the human is what matters. The action is what matters. Number two, 96% of uh, same-sex couples live together longer than straight couples on an average of seven to nine years before they're getting married. So they know who they are, they know what they like, and they know what they don't like. Number three, it's all about the money. 80% of same-sex couples have a higher household income than straight couples, often um, associated with children. As cute as they are, they take all your money, all of it. Like every day, all day, and then they poop and they pee and they cry, and it's like, what was I thinking? I'm not sleeping, I've gained weight. And then they giggle and it's all better for a moment, and then you start the cycle again. So um, this is why this statistic is currently this way. Um, unfortunately, it's not by choice. In many places, same-sex adoption is still not legal. Um, we're not technically valued as good parents. I'd actually have a better chance back in the States if I were pretending to be straight, which would be really fun, um, if I was unemployed and lived at home alone. I'd have a better opportunity uh, to adopt a child than if I was myself as a gay person hypothetically with a partner, two incomes, and an owned home, we still would be denied. Size matters, right? Is it just me or? OK, some of you. 90% uh, have less than 150 guests. So we're celebrating in an intimate way. Um, typically, this is typical. Of course, there are exceptions on the high end and on the low end. But when you pay for it yourself, you tend to be a little bit more thoughtful about how many people you choose to invite. So if you're an event space, an event planner, um, a venue, thinking about the capacity and how many people are going to be coming through, we tend to keep it little. Uh, we keep it really personal. Half of us are choosing to work with a friend or family member to marry us. Unfortunately, religion hasn't been so kind to queer people throughout the history of the world. 
Um, and so it does not make sense uh, when you are not welcome somewhere to force yourself in to receive a service that isn't given to you. Um, so if you are doing weddings all over the world, it's important to know how friends and family can become ordained, how they can become registered officiants in that area. Um, if you are an officiant yourself, how you can make it really clear that you would love to work with all couples, not just straight couples. Um, we're, you know, with every story, there's two sides. With this story, we did Matt and Rodney's wedding many years ago in their church in New York City on Fifth Avenue. Beautiful. It was a church they've been going to for six years. That was their first thought, we're getting married in our church. It was welcoming, it was inclusive, it was beautiful. A year before that, I was lining up the wedding party in a church, you know, doing our job in the foyer and whispering, Michelle, no, you go after you know, telling these people how to do the thing they just practiced the day before and completely forgot. So, you know, I'm politely doing my job. And the pastor of this church walked over, looked at me, and said, you're not welcome here. You may wait outside. And I at first thought maybe he was talking to someone else. <laughs> I didn't know who. Um, and then he literally walked over and escorted me out of his church. So I sat on the stairs and I began to cry. And the limo driver was like, yo, Joe, what are you doing? You're supposed to be inside. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> tried to play it off. And then he offered me a beer, which I don't drink, um, which then also concerned me why my limo driver was drinking beer <laughs> in the middle of the day. So that, you know, I dealt with that situation and buried the emotions of being kicked out of a place I wasn't welcome. So religion is a, is a tepid situation for many people. Um, we're having showers and brunches. When working with same-sex couples, we're not here for one event and one event only. We want to party before, during, after, and again. We just want to celebrate as much as we can because it's not something that we were given. It's not something we've expected. It's something that we fought for and earned. And when you live a life denied of equal rights, when you finally get it, you're going to celebrate the shit out of it because it's yours. Um, attire is not a surprise. So 26% of women keep their attire a surprise and only 3% of men do. So what does that mean? We're shopping together. So when two men or two women walk into your store, please don't say, oh my gosh, are you the bride and is this your sister? Yeah, because incest is sexy, right? Like that's what we want to promote. Or, oh my gosh, is this your maid of honor? This is the happiest day of their life. And within seconds, you kick them to the curb. Two men walk into the store, same thing. Oh, is this your brother? Is this your, your, your best man shopping for wedding outfits? No, this is my fiance. And I know it sounds simple. Well, Joe, just correct them. But imagine a life of correcting. And now you're paying people to bring your vision together, and it's a wedding planning process of correcting. It's just these small things that as an industry, we can pivot and shift and be better and do better and say better. Eight, their guests are top of mind. So 83 are focused on ensuring their guest experience is a number one priority. And I know what you're thinking, straight people care about their friends too. <laughs> and that's true. We all care about the people that we invite to our wedding, whether you're straight, gay, anything in the middle, whoever you are, guests matter. But the main difference here in this statistic, I can illustrate with a story. We had a couple and they wanted to put flat, like beautiful peony centerpieces in every hotel room. And I said, I don't know, are you sure about that? Like, I'd rather take that money and do this beautiful install in the ceiling and it would be really epic and it would be really gorgeous. And they said, no, we want centerpieces in every single room. And I said, okay, like a little bud vase, like, you know, you're taking my money for my design, like let's, and they said, no, Jove, we want high-end, beautiful, gorgeous flowers in every room. And here's why. He said, that person let me move in their home when my mother kicked me out. And this person picked me up off the floor when I thought my life wasn't worth anything. My parents won't be at my wedding, but my family, my chosen family will and they mean the world to me, and I will do anything to show them. And it was a different experience 
than doing because you think you have to do it or doing because it's expected of you. But your chosen family is your family. And like anyone with a family, you'll do whatever is needed to show and express your love and gratitude. Number nine, 80% will have an after party. As I said, gay people like to party. And we fought for the right to party, and now all we want to do is party. Um, and why end when you could just continue the party? Does anyone know the history or origin of pride or why we march around the world? It's essentially um, in the United States, a, a very popularized, well-known gay bar, which back in the day was not a well-known gay bar. When it was a crime to be gay in America, you hid in alleyways, in basements, in dark places, in parks, because your mere existence was punishable by prison. So you hide. They hid in this bar known as Stonewall Inn, and it was a known place. Police knew that you were there. They knew it was gay people. But if you bribed the police, you were pretty much OK. And about once a month, the police would come, arrest a few people, beat the shit out of some other people, just let everyone know who's in charge. And then there was one month where basically the patrons of this bar, queer people of color, transgender people, drag queens, they said, enough is enough. We don't, want to be, we don't want to be beaten and arrested anymore. And they stood up, and that was the first ever Pride March. It wasn't a dance. It wasn't a party. It was a, it was a revolution. It was gay people saying, we're no different than you. Stop treating us like animals. And they marched out and proud in public, which today seems like something we take for granted. But imagine your mere existence being illegal going out in the streets in the middle of the day in front of your bosses, your family, your friends, and saying to the world, I am me. So that's sort of the world and the root of where pride started and why people march around the world today is to honor that bar, that party that kept being shut down by the police. And so yes, we like to party. And we're pretty good at it. So get ready to host us for your after parties. Um, and the most important point of today that I really want to discuss in depth is we want you to tell us that you want to work with us. We're not mind readers. We don't know. 95% of LGBTQ couples agree that you need to do a better job of letting us know that you value us and want to work with us. There are still many cases where couples are being turned away because they're gay. I will not work with you. And imagine you have a call, you have a consultation, the happiest day of your life, and you call someone because you love the work that they do. And you tell them, you're amazing, I love you, I want you to do my wedding. Oh, and by the way, I'm gay. Is that OK? And those few seconds to minutes are bringing you right back to the pain of when you came out. You have to come out 10, 20, 30 times, depending on how many vendors you hire. And each time you're trying to have a celebratory moment, you're sucked back into a moment of pain. So tell us that you want to work with us. Well, Jove, how do we do that? Number one, show you're inclusive on your social media, on your website, anywhere you're present online. Show it with a cute emoji, with a badge, with a rainbow heart, with two men, with two women. Show us, visually show us you're inclusive. We had a planner in Cabo when I spoke at a conference there, and he's the gayest man in the world, and I love him. And you meet him, and you know he's gay. And he's a designer, and he's married to an even gayer man, and they're so beautiful and wonderful. And he said to me, so, Jove, nobody hires me because I, I don't understand. I'm gay. I said, yeah, you're very gay. Let me look at your Instagram. And I pulled it up, and it said, beautiful decor for happy brides with a diamond ring and a white blonde emoji bride. And I said, would you call this person? And he said, no, I don't do this. I said, you do this. He said, no, Elena, where's Elena? And then he yelled at Elena for a long time. And I said, it's not Elena's fault. It's a bigger issue, right? We're all chasing one client, the skinny, white, blonde, rich bride. And they're fine. They're great. But there's a world of people and actually, the world is much more diverse than it is skinny, white, blonde, bride. So show us you're inclusive. Say you're inclusive. 
use language that welcomes me. It doesn't have to say, ah, I fucking love gay people. I mean, it can. I would be really thrilled. I would double tap that. But, you know, a little bit more demure. We love all couples, equality minded, LGBTQ plus supporter, love is love. All couples welcome. Love inclusive. And lastly, but most importantly, show you're inclusive. You are who you do business with. And I want us to say that together um, in the singular. I am who I do business with. And don't say it with your post-tired lunch voice. Say it like you mean it, and then we'll talk about it. On the count of three, I am who I do business with. One, two, three. I am who I do business with. But what does that mean, Jove? What does it mean, I am who I do business with? Well, it's pretty simple to me. If you do business with someone who's a racist, what does that make you? Oh, you got really quiet. <laughs> hmm. You do business with someone who's homophobic. What does that make you? Oh, silence. You all really shown a lot of love today. <laughs> you do business with someone who's shady, has shady practices around money or cheap fake things. What does that make you? Shady. Yeah. You are who you do business with. Whether you work for a big brand or your own brand, you wake up every day and you decide you're just going to work to make a paycheck or you're changing the world and empowering people who matter. And that's up to you. You can get up and cash a check from anyone. Or you can get up and decide to reach out to suppliers who align with your values, who align with your mission. Any vendor in the states that works with me signs an inclusivity contract. If you voted for that a-hole that's in office, <laughs> we're not working together. If you eat at Chick-fil-A, we're not working together. The popular American fast food restaurant. Joe, you're so dramatic. No, I'm not dramatic. I love fried chicken. I very much love fried chicken. What I don't love is that when I go to a company and give them my money, they turn around and donate $4.5 million to take away my rights. That's not OK. So I really want you to think about it. Who are you doing business with? Who are the people you are empowering through a paycheck? Money is power. Money is a currency. We all trade in the world of power. And when you stand up on stage with your vendors and your suppliers, do you feel comfortable and confident that they all believe that marriage is an equal right? Do they all believe that we are all indeed equal? Do they think of people of color or people of a different sexuality different, less? It's something we have to wrestle with and think about. Or if you don't have a conscience and you just want to accept a check because it's big, and even though they, they literally <laughs> couldn't stand for or agree with anything that you believe, sometimes you just got to pay a bill, and I get that. But I want you to really think about it. Where is your money coming from? Are you going to a job every day? Are you working every day? Or are you changing the world every day in your own way through your business? All right, so five must-do tips to better connect with LGBTQ plus couples. Number one, update your photo gallery, please. If I go to another Instagram or another website where all I see is straight white people for 35 pages, I'm going to go crazy. I get it. It's what the media shows. It's what's on the cover of the magazine. But it's not actually what this country or my home country is. Statistics show a very different look and a very different picture of full-figured people people of color, people who are queer, people who are different. And no offense to skinny blondes, I love you, I wanted to be you for so many years, but I like french fries and chocolate chip cookies, so that's not in my journey. Um, so update your photo gallery. Jove, what do I do? I haven't done a same-sex wedding, I don't have any images. So tonight, during our party or during the next break, reach out to people in your world. Do a styled shoot, put together a photo shoot to get images of same-sex couples. And if you're not sure if you can be so forward to put two beautiful women on your website or your Instagram, just feature two shoes, two rings, two outfits. It doesn't have to always just be two humans. Diversity is sexy. Am I right? You're so sleepy. <laughs> I flew all the way over here for a silent audience. I'm re-questioning everything, James. Diversity <laughs> is 
sexy. It is. Skinny white people, I love you and you're beautiful, but the world is not you and you are not the world. And what we put in front of the world as trendsetters, as vendors, is what people see. What you choose to put on your Instagram every day matters. How you choose to label it matters. Are you part of the problem or the solution? It's really that simple. Here's my website. Right off the bat, one, two, three, same-sex couples, one, two, three, straight couples. And my logo's a rainbow because rainbows are beautiful. Uh, the Black Tux, where I rent this tux from, a rental company in the States. Second image on their website, two men. Not that difficult. Also, very smart because two men will rent more tuxes than a man and a woman, typically. Um, change your language. As I said, I heard the word bride today almost 100 times. There are really simple changes you can make pretty quickly to make your company more um, inclusive. So we're gonna move from a bride-centered world to a couple-centered world. And here are some really simple ways to do that. Number one, bride, couple. In your contracts, in your website, on your Instagram, any document that you have, control find or control search, search for the word bride and replace it for the word couple because now you've opened your business to everyone and you've actually shut no one out. No straight bride is gonna be like, oh my God, it doesn't say bride, I'm not calling. Right, it says wedding. They know what they want, they see what they, you know, what's there. Bride's name, this one gets me every time. We had two beautiful men, we were touring around and we saw a venue and they loved it and they were gonna book it and they sent me the contract and I said, don't forget it's Michael and it's two men. Like I always still have to say, even though you saw them and you met them, it's two men for the contract. And it came and it said bride and groom. And so I just wrote an email, hey, maybe you forgot, I you know, perhaps you sent me the wrong contract, even though the date was right, the time was right, the price was right, and my name was on there. I said, perhaps you sent me the wrong contract. No, that's it. I said, well, why does it say bride and groom? And this vendor said, oh, you can just cross that out and write what you want. And I said, you can just cross out this event with you because we're moving on. And we did, because little things matter. They add up to big things. How you treat someone and the way you speak to them matters. You want my business or you don't. You make it clear or you don't. So client name is great. Bride and groom, again, couple, name, client, partner, fiance, unicorn, I don't care what you call them. <laughs> we just don't need to be saying the two things because there's not a world of only bride and groom anymore. Bridal suite, ooh, that one gets me every time. Every single time I go on a site tour. I was in California at Pelican Hill doing a wedding recently, and I was doing a tour, and the director of sales and the director of bookings, they had a, it was a whole to-do. They gave me a full tour, and we walked to the suite, and they literally said to me, Jove, you are gonna love this bridal suite. And it said on the sign, like this big, bridal suite. And I said, oh, am I? So when my husband and I get married here, where will we get ready? And she goes, in the, wherever you want. <laughs> and I just said, Pam, I, I know you love me and I know there's no issue. But if the CEO of Apple is gonna give a keynote here, is he gonna get ready in the bridal suite? Call it what it is. You can't charge more because it says bridal. It's a private room filled with mirrors and bathrooms. <laughs> It's a private room, it's a green room, it's a wedding suite. Bridal party, even in straight weddings, we create bridezillas. We give them the fuel and the power to become crazy. Then, you know, once they become crazy, you know, it is what it is, but we give it to them by making it all about them. Because even in a straight marriage, it's a man. There is another person involved in this process. As much as they don't want to be involved or say they don't care or just like, babe, whatever you want, as long as there's a band and food and beer, I'm good. It's a wedding party. It's still two people becoming one. It's a crew. Bridesmaids, groomsmen. Again, I don't want to be a maid. I don't want to be anybody's maid. I'm not a maid. And why is it that in 2019 you can only have friends that are the same gender as you? That's really weird. All of my friends are women because women are amazing. No offense, men, but you're, we're pretty terrible. So, uh, and why is it that, that people feel constrained, straight or gay? 
that my wedding party has to be women if I'm a woman, and my wedding party has to be men if I'm a man. The people that love you and that you love should be part of your wedding party, your wedding crew, your squad, your people, your unicorn corral, whatever you want to call it. And bridal bouquet, it's flowers. They are flowers. I don't want a bridal bouquet. And you know what? A bride might not even want a bridal bouquet. She might want a flower crown. She might want a corsage. She might want an amazing cape made of flowers. Why do we call it something that doesn't add value? All right, come up with a few twists on tradition. Same-sex weddings are not straight weddings. Weddings are weddings, but same-sex weddings are very new in this country and around the world where they are legal. And the onus is on us to come up with new twists on traditions. We didn't fight for equality to then go and bake two men fit into a world that's a man and a woman. When you sit down with two men or two women, you don't say, so who's the bride? Who's the groom? Who wears the pants in this relationship? Like, what is it, 1950s? I mean, all that to say, if you meet a man who's really rich and handsome, I, I will happily be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> Just note, um, I will happily do that. So the onus is on us to come up with new traditions that feel authentic to our culture, our way of life, and our love story. So this is Amanda and Elena. Uh, they got married last year, two years ago. She just won the WNBA uh, World Championships and was named the MVP. She's very tall, the tallest person I've ever met, six, seven. Um, and they really didn't know what to do. They felt really kind of stuck in the middle. Both sets of parents were okay that their daughters were getting married. They weren't thrilled. So we fall into a position what we've done for our whole life. Blend in, please people. Blend in, please people. Blend in, please people. And it's your parents. It's instinctual. All you want to do is make them happy even if they're terrible people. You can't help it. It's like genetic. So they said, well, don't we have to walk with our dads? Don't we have to walk? Don't, doesn't one of us have to go first and wait up there and the other one? And I said, we don't have to do any of that. Actually, you sign the marriage license in private, you don't even have to do this in the States to be considered legally married. So we can do whatever we want to do. And it was about, as Alan said earlier, asking the right questions. What makes you most comfortable? Do you want to walk with your father? Do you want to walk alone? Do you want to walk together? Do you want to walk with your mothers? Do you want to walk with both parents? Rather than telling them, this is how straight people do it, so let me plug you into a straight equation, because it's easier and quicker, and I know how to do that really, really fast. So we decided they would each walk with their parents, their father, um, at the same time, and then stop halfway, and their fathers would go take their seats, and the two brides would walk down together. And it was super beautiful and romantic and true to who they were. We had another same-sex couple, they got married, and they said, you know what we hate about weddings? And I said, no, I don't know, let's have another drink. So uh, they told me a lot of things, and then they said, we don't want to be the center of attention. We don't want to walk down an aisle like a straight couple when everyone gets up, and do they get up if there's no bride? <laughs> um, and stares at you, and, you know, and all you see is their back or their, like, you know, their shoulder. And so we decided all the guests would wait in the foyer, and we had jazz and, and champagne, and then the grooms and the, and the officiant were at the altar. And we opened the doors in the back of the room, and all of the guests walked down the aisle to the couple. And they stood here and watched as all the people that they loved encircled them. And if anyone here a theater buff? No? Yes? You're British, you're just going to be quiet? Okay. I'm going to keep going. So if you've seen the movie or the, the show Wicked on Broadway, um, they hired two male Broadway singers to sing the song For Good, which is sung by two women in the show. And as they walked down the aisle, the ceiling turned green, and there was not a dry eye in the house. And it was really beautiful. And I think I'm going to encourage you not only for same-sex for same couples, but for all of your couples. Why do we do it the way we do it? Think about the why. Present options and let your clients decide. Instead of, well, you stand there and you stand there and you go first and you go last and that's how it's done. Unless they ask for that, why do we offer it? Because to me it sounds insane that we do the same job every weekend the same exact way with different people. 
That does not sound like a world I want to be a part of, right? We can spice it up. Ban the words normally and traditionally. These words really get me every time. Raise your hand if you want a normal wedding. Yeah, nobody. Said nobody ever, right? Who calls the Langham and says, I would love your normal chicken and uh, your dry salmon, please. Yeah, overcook it. Overcook the shit out of it. Yes, please. And I'd like your normal linens unpressed and your typical chairs that come with the room, because it's my wedding. I just want a normal wedding. <laughs> but it's built into our brain to say normal, typical, traditional, classic. It's drilled in here, normal. Well, what's normal? So when the client says, Jove, what's normal? I said, well, let's discuss what feels right for you. I can tell you what people have done, what has been done, but we can also discuss what can be done. Number five, get social. The world is on Instagram. All couples are on social media, or their friends are, or their family is. 85% of my business comes from Instagram. 85%. So do I take it seriously? You bet I do. And it's free. Uh, when I say get social, I also mean follow queer accounts. If you're not a queer person, if you're unfamiliar with queer culture, queer history, queer traditions, because why would you be if you're straight, right? Why would you have a vast knowledge of, of gay life or culture? Follow it. Become familiar with it. LGBTQ history is really incredible, powerful, moving images with the history of the gay community and the gay rights movement. HGC couples, hot gay men. I mean, who doesn't want to look at that every morning when you're pooping? I do. It's really beautiful. We all do it, right? Like every morning we're addicted, which is a whole other seminar when you're pooping, when you're peeing, when you're doing everything. Right now, half of you are doing it, right? Because I'm boring, and so you're on your phone, unless you're following these accounts. Um, equally wed H&H &H weddings, beautiful resources to show you some ideas of what other same-sex couples have done, what they've worn, how they've celebrated, where they've gone, what they look like, what they don't look like. Um, and also, I don't have a laser pointer, but you see the yellow box here? People see who you follow. If I go to your Instagram account and I see that you're following these accounts, because it will say here that we both follow the same account, already I know I'm in good company. I know you're good people. I know that you are family, because you're following accounts that say that. Um, hashtags, number one question, can I use hashtag gay? Depends. Uh, you cannot use the hashtag, that was so hashtag gay. That's not OK. Gay wedding, gay weddings, two brides, gay love, love is love. Hashtags are search words. So use the words that are relevant to your business. Gay wedding Langham Hotel. As a gay person, what do you think I'm going to search for if and when my handsome rich man comes into my life? Gay wedding London. Gay wedding planner London gay wedding florist. I'm going to search for what I am and what I want. So if you're not putting that content out into the world like these millions of people are, you're not being found in that way. So use it appropriately. Don't just use it to use it. <laughs> use it thoughtfully. So just as a quick wrap up, five ways to better connect with the LGBTQ plus couples. Update your photos. Change your language. Come up with new twists on tradition. Ban the word normal, normally. Well, normally, when we plan a wedding, we like to get white linens. The bride's going to sit over here, and the groom's going to stand over there watching sports, and the bride's going to be angry. <laughs> And then I'll give her some champagne, and normally she'll calm down, and then normally they'll kiss, and normally people will stand. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Nobody wants to hire that person. They're going out of business. It's not fun. Nobody wants a normal wedding. And number five, get social. Get social today. Use your phone in a way that matters. Don't just follow really hot people or really silly things. People are watching what you're doing in like a really weird, creepy way. 
my good friend back in New York, this is an aside, she is a planner and she's from Texas and her mom, she and I are good friends and so her mom followed me on Instagram and she's been following me aggressively and she's very sweet and she's a mom and she messaged her daughter and said, is Jove dating your friend? And her daughter messaged her mom back and said, why do you think that? And she said, he just liked three of his photos. <laughs> <laughs> and sent her a screenshot. And so that we had drinks and she goes, are you dating this guy? And I was like, we've been on two dates. And she's like, my mom knows. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, whoa. People are crazy. They're stalkers. They want to know you. They want to know your world. They're hiring you and your friends in our small world. So I'll end with a quote. What you do matters. How you do it matters, who you do it with matters, because you matter. Thank you. <laughs>